So let's talk about it, how to get into data science. So data science is a highly technical field. It's not the easiest to get into. It's a blend of programming, statistics, and industry knowledge. But when you do break in, you'll have a lot of great benefits waiting for you. First, I'm going to tell you what you need to learn, and then I'm going to tell you how to learn it. Let's do it. So the first thing you need to do, which is what I think a lot of people skip and it really hurts them, is you need to first start looking through job descriptions and job postings for the positions that you want. You know, data scientists work in a lot of different fields, a lot of different areas, and they can do slightly different things. So you need to figure out what type of data science you want to be, meaning what industry you want to work in, and tailor your studying to that industry. So after looking through job descriptions, you'll realize that there's certain things that everyone has in common. And if they don't have these things, it's not really data science. First thing you're gonna need to learn is programming languages. So I would recommend starting with SQL because that's the basis language for any data position. Not just data science, data analytics, data engineering, even architecture, they're all going to need to know SQL. It's literally the language of interacting with databases. The other languages you will see are number one, Python, and number two, R. Now, I actually happen to work exclusively in R. It's a language made by statisticians for statisticians. It's not a conventional programming language. In fact, a lot of computer science people hate it. But even being somebody who works exclusively in R, I would recommend learning Python. Python has overtaken R as the most popular language for data science, and that's because of its extensive machine learning library. Scikit-learn, so NumPy, Pandas, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Keras, all of those have become the industry standard for machine learning. So make sure you focus on those packages and learn them very well. And if when you were going through your job descriptions, you saw a lot of jobs that you really, really want that require R, Go ahead and learn R then too if you want to. I would just focus more on Python because it's way more common and you're gonna need to learn a lot of stuff in a short time, so you have to be efficient with your learning. But if you wanna take a basic class, basic online class about R and understand a little more, go ahead, it's only gonna help you. And when you're learning programming, you know, kind of pay attention if you enjoy it. If you're learning to program and you don't really like it, like maybe you should look into another field, you know? You gotta enjoy what you're doing at the end of the day. So programming is gonna take a big chunk of your time to learn, and the other big chunk is gonna be machine learning. Yeah. But don't worry, there's a lot of overlap and I'll get to that later on in the video. So let's talk about learning machine learning. Now machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence and computer science which focuses on the use of data and algorithms to imitate the way that humans learn, gradually improving its accuracy. Now in the layman's terms, the way I say it is you use statistics to predict stuff. So in machine learning, there's a bunch of different algorithms and there's a bunch of different versions of each algorithm. It's definitely overwhelming at first, but let me break it down for you and show you the few main algorithms that you should focus on. The first algorithms you should look at is linear regression and logistic regression. You probably remember linear regression from any stat class you've ever taken, you know, y equals mx plus b, you know, fitting a line to points. That's just linear regression right there. And statistics say it actually makes up 80% of machine learning algorithms. And it's used so much because it's very, very quick to build. It's very accurate. It has a lot of great results. It's quick to train and it actually shows you variable importance too. After that, I would get into decision trees, specifically random forests. Decision trees are also very, very interpretable but they're not the most accurate models. So it's best to go straight from decision trees to random forest, which is just a conglomerate of decision trees. 
Random Forest is another very, very common model with real good accuracy. And it's used a lot for categorical models, but it can also be used for regression also. And now that you know about decision tree modeling, you can move on to boosted decision trees or just boosted models. The most famous one right now is the XG Boost model, which has won a lot of competitions and it's being used everywhere because it's really, really fast and really, really accurate. And it can be used again for regression and classification. And all XG Boost is is a super optimized decision tree model. Now the last two algorithms I would use is an SVM, which is kind of like a souped up linear regression model. And the second one is naive Bayes algorithms, which can be used for classification and regression. And it focuses on using conditional probability for predictions. So those are the most popular shallow algorithms in the real world I've used all of them and it's a very important to know the strengths and weaknesses of each so study that more than anything just the strengths and weaknesses of each implementation and spend time learning how to tune and train each one also and also remember that usually when you're building a model in the real world you usually train models against each other as well. So you might be testing out a random forest model, a boosting model, a linear regression, and another type of model. And comparing them all to each other and then selecting the best version of the best model. So it's very important to know a bunch of different types of models and the best way to compare them is to test them against each other. Now, deep learning, neural networks. Now these are things that are catching a lot of people's eye. I know if you're watching this is probably what you're most interested in but i'm just going to give you a little warning if you are just trying to break into the field get your entry level data science you might need to steer clear away from this field entirely if you're trying to become a data analyst first you're not going to need any deep learning knowledge and if you're trying to get that entry level data science position there's only a very small chance and you're going to need any deep learning expertise go back to those job descriptions not many entry level data science positions require deep learning expertise it's much more practical to spend your time studying the other things we're talking about in this video however it is the most interesting part of data science so i'm going to go over it a little bit if it's interesting and you have time to look at it First, go over artificial neural networks. These are the type of networks that you can plug right in place of another shallow algorithm that you can use for classification or regression. Get a basic understanding of how it works, how the layers work, how it interacts with each other, and understand what it takes to get a workable and usable model. Then, again, only if you have time and you're very curious, you can start looking at RNNs, which are for natural language processing, and CNNs, which is for computer vision. Those are the things that people who are specifically doing artificial intelligence are using. So, all of that information would be absolutely useless if I did not tell you how to learn it, you know? You would be doing yourself a disservice if you opened up a textbook and tried to read it from front to back about Python or something like that. I mean, that's like some stone age stuff at this point and i'll be giving you a much more in-depth video soon on exactly how you can learn it and the best techniques but let me give you an overview right now so you can go and get started first thing you want to do especially if you're starting from scratch is take an online course now there are so many online courses coursera edx udemy Udacity, all of them have great, great courses. And at this point, it's not really like one is better than the other. So look around, find a course that fits something that you wanna take and just get right into it. The first course you should take should be SQL for data science. Make sure it says for data science so it will be tailored to what you're doing. That way you can get your hands dirty with SQL. That way you can get to learn SQL. And the next course you should take should either say Python for data science or Python for machine learning. Pick whichever one you want to take. These courses will kind of kill two birds with one stone because you'll learn the programming language and you'll learn more about the data science or machine learning fields and interconnect the programming with what you're trying to do with the programming, which is data science and machine learning. Now, these courses are gonna take some time. You're gonna have to push through them. Make sure you don't skip anything. Don't skip those homeworks that are so annoying and so easy to skip. Those homework assignments where you're actually doing hands-on coding and hands-on project, 
Those are gonna be the best things for you, much better than watching videos. And once you've completed courses enough to give you a basic understanding of programming and the data science field, it's time for you to start building your portfolio and doing your own projects. Some of the courses you do might even have a project at the end for you to do. That's perfectly fine for you to put that into your portfolio. Make sure the project is real and practical and actually solves a problem and you share your conclusions. If you're having trouble figuring out how, how to do that or what that exactly entails, if you go to kaggle.com, there's many, many data science products that you can look at and base your project off of. You can actually mimic a project like that too, maybe do your own analysis and come to different conclusions. I landed my first internship with no experience because in my own time I did my own project and I just had a portfolio with one project in it and it was a project comparing the stats of Michael Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron to each other. And I did it from end to end and the person that hired me was just impressed that I was able to do that on my own time, took the initiative to do that and made a professional report with it that I was able to get the job just off of that. Trust me, recruiters and interviewers are going to love seeing that you have your own portfolio, your own GitHub with your own stuff in it. Now, once you've done this and you build your portfolio, you can start applying to jobs. Apply to those data science jobs, definitely, but understand that entry level data science jobs are a little bit scarce. Most of them require you to have a little bit of experience. So apply to data science jobs and data analyst jobs. If you've seen my videos before, I'm a big fan of working as a data analyst before getting your first data science job. It's much easier to get a data analyst job and it's really the stepping stones into data science. I worked as a data analyst first and on the job I was able to learn to code. I was able to learn R, a little bit of Python. I learned a lot of SQL. I got my Tableau experience and all of that got me my first data science job because that was all exactly what they were looking for for data science. So if you're applying to jobs and those data science jobs just aren't hitting you back, you know, other people are being selective, more experience, go for that data analyst job. You're going to make good money still. You're going to have a good, stable paying job. You're going to figure out if you really want to be a data scientist or you want to go another route and you will eventually be able to get that data science job in a not too long amount of time actually. Last little tip when you're looking at data analyst positions, make sure it's like a technical analyst position that requires you to know SQL or some technical skill like Tableau or R or Python. Looking at analyst positions can be tricky because they throw analysts at the end of every single position. So be careful what you're applying for. Make sure it has SQL, R, Python, Tableau, or another big BI tool, and make sure it'll really get you into that data science position that you really want to get into. So that's it for this video. If I taught you something, if you learned something, you want to see more, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you get that little ping whenever I drop a video, and stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to see you all soon.